Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to be talking about how cause and effect refutes free will. Okay, um, before we do that, I just want to go briefly into the purpose of the show. Um, basically, we have this illusion of free will, and to the extent that we hold it, you know, um, notwithstanding all, all the evidence to the contrary, then actually it becomes a delusion. You know, we, we see the truth, but we refuse to, uh, to acknowledge it. <laughs> it's kind of like an irony. It's not like it's not our fault, of course, because we don't have free will, but that's the way apparently um, nature is um, compelling us. And um, so, yeah, the idea is like to the extent we have this free will, or this belief in free will, we, um, we hold ourselves and each other wrongly accountable. Um, when we do wrong, we, we kind of like blame each other. It creates like when we do right, a lot of times we, we become arrogant. You know, we become, we think, oh, we're better than other people, you know, because of what we've done. Um, and, and sometimes when other people do something great, um, if we believe in free will, if we believe that what they did was completely up to them, we might feel envious of, of their achievements, of, of what they are and have, whatever. So, um, so yeah, the idea is like, you know, to the extent we can overcome this illusion of free will, this delusion, we can create a more intelligent, uh, more truthful, more understanding world. Okay. Um, now, these episodes are on the web, so if you go to causalconsciousness.com or Google Exploring the Illusion of Free Will, it should take you there. There are 30 episodes there right now, and uh, although actually when this comes on, yeah, no, 31 actually. But And, um, and then there's also, um, I'm going to try to put more material on it, but there's just briefly some basic ex explanations of why free will is impossible, just like, you know, causality and, and the unconscious, actually. And which is what I'm going to get into right now. So, you know, what I'd like to do is define briefly what people mean when, when they say that we have a free will. Because, um, like, what happens is some philosophers claim that we have a free will, but what they, <laughs> the term they use for free will is not what people mean when they say free will. For example, some philosophers will claim that, well, if my physical body um, did something and, and no one else was compelling it, you know, that's a free will action. But see, what, what that misses is the issue of control. Because like our bodies do a lot, but who is controlling what, 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 um, what happens if it's our unconscious? If our unconscious is actually deciding everything we, we do, because that's, that's the way it is, then certainly, sure, our unconscious is a part of us, but it's not a part of us that we have any awareness of, let, let alone control of. Control of, let alone awareness, who knows? All right, um, so yeah, so basically, free will, you know, um, when people say that we have free will, it's like that things are completely up to us, completely, completely free of any influence, so that, you know, we can decide whatever we want completely free of what we learned, what we didn't learn, what we experienced, who our parents were, where we were raised, where we were born, all this stuff. And, and so just by that, it's so easy to see that, that no, we're not free from that, that all that stuff makes us who we are and decides for us as, as, as we decide. All right, so that's enough of that. And um, how cause and effect refute free will. Um, this is, this is very basic, because there, there's two ways to, to understand why. Um, may, there, there may be a few more, but um, two basic ways to understand why free will is an illusion. First is cause and effect, that everything has a cause. That's what this show is going to be about. And the second is that we have an unconscious. And if all our decisions, if all our thoughts and memories and everything we base our decisions on is in our unconscious, and our unconscious is not something that we're by definition aware of, you know, our, our conscious mind just ha has no idea it's there, then that can tell you that our unconscious mind is the only part of our mind that has access to all that data in the unconscious to uh, base its decisions on. All right, so, but back to causality. 
And again, we've, we've gone over this before, but we have to go over this more, and I'll tell you why. Um, this, this belief in free will, it's conditioned. It's conditioned. We're, we're taught it, you know, kind of like, well, through religion, certainly, but, but it's kind of like we're culturally conditioned to believe that we have a free will. And so, like, this, this idea that, um, that we don't, that, that cause and effect refute it, it's, it's kind of like challenging a very, very strongly held idea, okay? Because these, you know, we, we integrate this belief in free will, let's say, when we're very young and we have it through our life. And it's actually pretty difficult, um, at least at this stage in civilization, to, to act as if we don't have a free will, you know, because the illusion is so powerful, you know, which, and, and I work on it. Uh, if, the, if the entire world were to understand that free will was an illusion, then we could all work on it together, and that would make it so much easier for everyone, you know, because we'd be, you know. But, but it, it, we, we are basically reconditioning ourselves, and that's why it's important to go over and over this. And, and all, the other thing is, like, for example, like, you might watch um, this episode now, and you're in a completely different mood than, than you were, let's say, when you watched an episode when I was explaining cause and effect, you know, a month ago. Okay? So the idea is, like, you know, you may be more receptive to it now. A lot of times, if you hear something um, repeatedly, you know, in different ways, within different contexts, that will help you gain a more clear understanding of whatever it is. All right, so, okay. Um, so basically, cause and effect um, simply means that everything happens for a cause. Okay, think about this. Everything happens for a cause. Nothing just comes into being. It's always, there's always a cause for it. There's always a reason why it happens. We may not know what it is, but there has to be a reason. And a um, little history on this. Leucipp Leucippus, um, Greek philosopher, 5th century BC, was the first person, at least in the West, to, um, to make a statement about causality, cause and effect. And what he said was that nothing happens at random, but everything for a reason and by necessity. And um, we're going to get into the randomness part a little later, but um, so yeah, we um, we see that um, everything happens for a cause. Now let's 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 apply this principle. If we believe, if we accept and understand that everything happens for a cause, let's now apply this principle to um, to human will, to our decision. Okay. I make a decision to <laughs> lift my hand up like that. Okay. Um, there was a cause for that. Um, you know, and we can describe causes like neurobiologically, physically, or psychologically, you know, in terms of um, motivations, desires. Um, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how we define cause. Basically, like, Something caused my hand to move like that. It didn't just like move like that without cause. Nothing happens that is uncaused. Everything has to have a cause, all right? So like, so if, if, if that, you know, movement of mine has a cause, then that cause of, of moving my hand also has a cause. Okay, and this is important because like, if everything didn't have a cause, then, well, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't go that way, because, like, it's just, like, it's, it's um, incoherent, I mean, like, to, to believe that things happen without a cause. But, um, but, yeah, the idea is, like, you know, if there's a cause for me moving my hand, there's also a cause for that cause. In other words, causes are events. Um, a billiard ball um, moves into another one, is knocked into a, a second billiard ball. It causes that second billiard ball to move. That billiard ball moves 
and it causes a third billiard, billiard ball to move, you know, or dominoes. You know, you have one domino um, causing the rest of the dominoes to fall in, in that kind of like domino um, chain. That's how reality exists, and, and free will, and our human will cannot escape. How can, you know, think about this. How can our, our mind, our brain, escape that causality? It can't. You know, our, we cannot defy the laws of nature. Um, you know, and, and I'm not saying that there, you know, there, there may be, quote, unquote, supernatural aspects of our reality that, um, that we just don't understand, so we don't have physical laws of nature f nature for or or that um, you know it's just like we don't understand everything but but um, but in terms of what we understand um, it's certainly it, it, it's it's all causal it's it's um, okay let me see this is this yeah um, okay why everything was all right I want to go I want to like discuss this cause and effect from the perspective of change, okay? Because, like, I think we, we can understand that if all of our decis decisions have, you know, a cause and, and every cause and everything must have a cause, then, then you know, that refutes free will. Um, but I want, I want to explain this principle of causality, cause and effect, from a more fundamental universal standpoint, um, The first fact of existence is that it exists. Okay, reality exists. The universe exists. Everything exists. Um, the second fact of the universe is that um, things are in motion. There's change. You know, this 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 reality, this universe, is not static. It's not frozen, okay? It, it changes moment by moment. It evolves. And that means that, you know, basically the universe is, to the best of our understanding, matter, mass energy, moving through space in time. Okay, that, that's, that's what change is. And, um, and that's how you can understand how fundamental this, this principle of cause and effect is. Because... Were it not for, were it not for change, again, our universe would be completely static, completely motionless. Nothing would happen. And were it not for cause and effect, for causality, there could be no change because causality is what allows the change. Causa causality is what allows, you know, the 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 movement, the evolution of of the universe from one moment to the next. And and causality is what what enables, what, um, what creates the, the, the motions. You know, you have basically particles. You have um, mass energy interacting with, with other mass energy, knocking into, it's basically, reality is basically things knocking, bouncing <laughs> into each other and all. And it's all causal. It's kind of, it's interesting. Okay. Um, something, I want to get into um, randomness. Okay, some people say that some things are not caused. They'll point to certain phenomenon um, like radioactive decay. Okay, apparently with a radioactive isotope, it's impossible to predict when that isotope, um, the exact moment that isotope will decay. It's, it's, it's what's called the half-life of the particle. It's impossible, you know, for various reasons and, you know, curiously, very curiously, um, physicists, or, yeah, physicists have, have basically made the wrong, the very, very illogical conclusion that if we can't detect, if we can't predict the, radio rate, the rate of radioactive decay for a radioactive isotope, then the mechanism by which that radioactive isotope um, decays cannot be causal, you know, that, that it's got to be quote-unquote random. That's absurd. In other words, they're saying that since we can't predict 
the rate of a single particle's decay, that that process of decay um, cannot be caused. You know, and there is a lot of confusion about this. It, it, it relates to I'm going to get into this. Might as well. It relates to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Back in 1924 through 27. Warner, Heisenberg, and Niels Bohr, basically two physicists, mainly it was basically Heisenberg, um, he came up with what was known as the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. And basically that just says that like you can't simultaneously measure a particle's position and momentum. Okay, because what happens when you try to do that is like when you try to pinpoint its position, its momentum, which is kind of like its direction and velocity, velocity becomes less clear. Um, when you try to get a clearer picture of the momentum, you know, then the particle's position become less, becomes less clear. And it's not just for particle position, it's for any two of what physicists um, refer to as conjugate variables, variables that, that have this kind of relationship with each other, particle spin, various other kinds of things. But here's the thing. All right, fine. Fine, nobody, you know, nobody seriously disputes that we can't simultaneously measure the position and momentum of a particle, but how a physicist, how a person can get, can get from that reality, that understanding, to thereafter concluding that um, that, that particle behavior is therefore uncaused is... Um, it's perplexing. It's, it's illogical. You can't, you know, just because you can't predict the behavior of something does not mean that it's not causal. Everything has to be causal. Um, randomness. You know, they say things are random. What does that mean? You know, random, um, all right, there's various meanings for random, and that's, I think, what, what um, creates some of the confusion. If, if there's somebody else in the room, and I, I say, like, pick, you know, one of these papers, you know, like a deck of cards or something at random, basically that's a colloquial um, use of the term, meaning like without purpose, without order, without any kind of like real intention, just like, you know, without, yeah, without, without intention, just like whatever happens. But, but physicists, pu very curiously, they, um, they take, sometimes they'll define randomness as uncaused, and and the reason again for this is that um, is because they believe um, that if you can't predict something, then it, then it has to be uncaused. That that doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense because, like you know, with the radioactive isotope, you're saying that they would be saying that it just decayed. There was no cause for for it decaying when it did. It just did. And also with, with quantum mechanics, um, before quantum mechanics, there was Newtonian physics, uh, New Newtonian mechanics, classical mechanics. And basically what they did with classical mechanics is like in the macro world, with subatomic particles, you can't, you know, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle applies. But in the macro world, that, um, that effect is so small that you can, you know, in, in practice, make very accurate predictions by measuring the position and momentum of, you know, of, of particles and their interaction. Because, like, again, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle applies to quantum phenomenon, very, very small. And, um, and I mean, it's kind of, like, interesting because, like, you know, our, our neurons, our neural activity is all macro. It's all, you know, it's not quantum phenomenon. So it really, this stuff wouldn't apply to it. But, um, but getting back to this idea, like, you know, there is no such thing as quote unquote true randomness. True randomness would mean that it's um, it happens for no cause. And again, that that that's impossible. Um, okay. So we have cause and effect. Everything has a cause. Every and you know. And again, the, the, the evolution of the universe from moment to moment to moment to moment is the best way of understanding that. And so it's just very clear <laughs> to see how, like, if everything has a cause, then free will must be impossible. 
Um, okay. I think I've explained this enough. Um, I'm, I'm going to explain it more, but it, it's enough for now. I want to go through just like some other, like just miscellaneous considerations. You know, we've got another seven minutes. So. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Influence equals compulsion. The factor either contributes to a decision or it does not. Okay, some people will say that, well, yeah, certain factors will influence our decision, but they won't make the decision for us. They're just an influence. That's kind of like um, not logical, actually. Because think about it. Um, <clears throat> if you have something influencing a decision, it's something that is necessary or influencing yeah, decision. It's something that's necessary to the decision. In other words, if um, if you're deciding between um, a sandwich and soup, you know, for lunch, and and you kind of like don't really feel so hungry, you're going to um, opt for the soup, um, most likely. Um, so the influence of that is like your hunger. You know, without that hunger, um, you, wouldn't, um, you wouldn't be making that decision. And so like any influence, any, any, any kind of factor, you know, a memory you have, something somebody told you, how you were raised, uh, your physiology, what's happening within your body and mind, you know, all these things, uh, the, 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 the amount of sunlight, the, the, the heat or, or lack thereof, whatever. You know, all these things are influences and an influence will either, well, it will either not be an influence on a decision or it will be. And if it is an influence, then that completely, that, that shows very clearly how free will is illusory. It, it, you know, it cannot be because like when we, when we think about influences, we have to think in two terms. Um, firstly, a lot of the influences that, that affect our every decision are not up to us. Okay, and secondly is, is like this idea of causality, that if these influences, you know, level of hunger, amount of light, uh, whether it's raining or not, day or night, all these influences that would, would kind of like come together to, um, to influence everything we do, they're not up to us, but, but also they have a causal chain. They, 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 everything that happens has a cause. So every influence on every decision we have must have a cause. So then if you follow the causal chain of that influence back in time, you'll see that every influence on every decision we make was, um, has a causal, you know, was compelled you know, by events, by a causal chain, causal regression, stretching back before we were born. So, so yeah, this, you know, Again, influence equals compulsion. If something is influencing something, it is making it happen. You know, um, okay. Um, let's see. Let's see what else. Um, is like, I think we're experiencing our, uh, an earthquake because, like, we are absolutely, definitely experiencing an earthquake. This is freaking amazing. I mean, because, like, this, this thing is, like, shaking. Whoa. That's, all right. Um, what do you say about that? God. I, I mean, like, I hope it's, this is it's amazing. I don't know. All right. I'm, we've got, like, three minutes more to go. And I think it's probably appropriate, like, to end this episode early, see what's going on. All right, so um, I hope you understand how, like, everything is, like, this, this, you know, everything is caused. You know, free will is impossible, and I'll be back, um, you know, with other shows to explain this more. Um, this is George Tate's thing. All right, I'll be back soon. Thanks. Bye.